My name is Dr. Jane Goldberg. Welcome to my show, Musings from 20th Street. I'm a psychoanalyst and I own La Casa de Spa, which is, ironically enough, located on 20th Street. Today I want to talk a little about group therapy. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to do research on psychoanalysis and psychotherapy because the fact is that you look at to see whether or not somebody actually gets anything from this process are pretty ephemeral, like I feel better, I'm clearer, I think better, I feel more, I feel less. So I'm interested in a study that was done a few years back at Kaiser Permanente in California. It's a big hospital out there. They, were, they, they had a lot of cancer patients there and they decided that they wanted to do group therapy to see if they could have any impact on pain. So they gathered together all the patients and they put them in a group and then they had a control group that um, didn't have the group psychotherapy. And the results really blew the minds of the researchers because it was so unexpected. What they found is that the people who were participating in the group lived longer. Group therapy is a very powerful mode of treatment. I've been doing groups for about 30 years and I just think that group therapy is the best thing that, that we uh, psychotherapists and psychoanalysts have invented. So I have had this lifelong dream of having a group therapy on TV so that everybody, the universe, can see the amazing process that happens when you gather people together for the sheer purpose and sole purpose of talking, of communicating what you're thinking and what you're feeling in this environment where that's what we want to do. We just want to share our thoughts and our feelings and learn how to be more skillful in our communication and to access our thoughts and feelings better on an individual level. So I am realizing my dream today. I'm very excited about being here and I'm excited about being here with my group. The first, as far as I know, the first reality TV group psychotherapy. So uh, I would like um, to begin and I have no agenda. I'm asking people to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about, and let's see what unfolds. I'd like to talk about the group rules, first of Great. all. Great. Because um, somebody did send me an email saying, um, since we're going to be participating in this group, can I get you, we should know each other, and do you have a Facebook page? But I had been in group before, so maybe the person didn't know that there are some rules. And that um, I guess one of the rules is that we cannot communicate outside of this group. That's correct. And the reason for that rule is because I don't want outside relationships to develop so that you then dilute this process. I want this process to be as raw and natural as possible. And it, it may surprise people that have not experienced group mm -hmm. and don't have familiarity with it that you actually become like a family. And, and you love and hate each other. And you really want to go out for lunch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You really, really you, do. <laughs> you may want to go out yeah. for lunch, and you may want to hope that they walk in front of a car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, as far as groups, um, I've been in a lot of group therapy um, over many years, and I found most of them generally to be extremely hostile especially towards me for some reason, because I'm a very friendly, outgoing person. Maybe that's why. Um, and people have said some very cruel things so, to me. So, Barbara, we can conclude that either you bring hostility to you, and there's something about your personality and your character that does that, and we can study that here, or that you were just with a lot of hostile people that... Mm -hmm. I would, I, well, the, you know, look, all of us that are here today obviously have issues with other people. We wouldn't be here. Um, I'm a very friendly person. I don't attack anybody unless I'm attacked first. But I have a very good radar when it comes to people's body language or dirty looks or s smiling or okay, saying Okay, so things. it would be very helpful for Barbara's character and her self-growth if all of us study our own responses to Barbara and see as any feelings of hostility come up that we really understand whether she's doing anything that's stimulating them or whether it arises out of our own history. What, what exactly is the play here in terms of um, uh, hostile feelings towards Barbara if they actually do come Well, up? I could see how it could happen because um, 
Barbara, you haven't stopped talking since we arrived out in the hallway. Well, you know, forgive me, but yeah, you're judging me, but that's another story. Well, I'm okay, so we have attack number one on Yeah, <laughs> well, no, no. So I, I, I sensed you saying, like me from as soon as you walked oh, in I like the room. You, I like you very much, but I can see how that, it's just an, it's an incessant talking and it, 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 it you Are you perfect? Know, I just jump. No, okay. absolutely. Uh, all right, because so I, I have not said one thing about you. Barbara, Barbara, words. maybe what you want to do with this, instead of attacking back, which I understand is a natural impulse, but mm -hmm. maybe what you want to do with this is actually look inside yourself and see how you feel about the fact that Kay has complained about you a little bit and, and verbalize how it makes you feel. Well, that, I, that would be very useful. It makes me process. feel, you know, look, I know my issues. I do talk a lot. I am a creative person. People either love me or they hate me. There's no gray. There's black and white. And um, some people are going to be able to connect with me and others are going to either be jealous or envious or whatever other issues that they have that they don't know about. Um, I don't think a group is to attack other people. I mean, if this were AA, people would be drinking as soon as they left the group. I, you know what okay, I'm saying? So I'm, 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 I disagree with that because AA, the whole point of going is so you don't drink after group. Well, so no, no, you know what I mean. No, I I, I, I just, I'm just saying. Like, people, it, it's a more loving environment because people support each other. I find with mentally. Okay, but uh, Bob, can I just say I've never been to group therapy. I came into this room. I met everyone. I accept everyone the way they are because maybe I, I have a little bit different way of thinking about things in right. life. Right. I think people are really disconnected in life nowadays. I see I that in a huge way because mm -hmm. everybody's so fearful. They're fearful of what? I don't know what they're afraid yeah. of. But I really think. Um, that that's a feeling and I'm not a therapist but I think that's something that you have inside of you so you already generate that as soon as you you come it, it's it's like an aura that you give off because I have a nothing no bad feelings about you or anybody else in this room and I didn't judge you when I came in I think you look great in turquoise okay <laughs> I, I think you I know you're an actress because you've said it and I feel it um, I don't know if you're in a relationship or with a man, but there's like a little thing missing there. Oh, there's um, a lot of things there's missing. There's a little Trust thing me. missing there for you. No, there are and, a lot of things missing. And if I saw you on the streets, I would talk to you on the streets about anything because that's my character. Yeah. That, that's who I am. I, I like that response that uh, there's a lot missing because um, I, I'm compiling over the years. I, I have this book that uh, I'm imagining writing one day when I have time and finish the three books that I'm working on now. And it's the um, 10 or, it, you know, it's probably grown now to about 100 basic principles of communication. And one of them is that when somebody accuses you of something, plead guilty. It's always better to plead guilty. So I think that was a very useful response that you said. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I do not going to deny my, my imperfections. I'm not perfect. And even my friends will say, yeah, you talk a lot. But they love me anyway. But I want to ask Kay a question. <laughs> um, so... You, you have noticed, and, and Lana, you might be interested also in jumping in on this. You, so you've noticed that she talks a lot. She I could it. see how that could get... I, I, I grew up with a mother who was manic depressive who never shut up. So I have a high tolerance for it. And I don't mind if you chatter endlessly. I can tune it out. But I'm just saying in certain situations with certain personality types, that could be... Annoying. So let, let's take a moment and look inside you and yes. see what does that stimulate in you. Does it stimulate <coughs> that you're being eliminated because you're not giving yeah, shuts given me down. space? Yeah, it, it shuts me down because there's no room to, to, to say anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of your growth, um, you have the possibility of just you know, retreating and shutting or down. Or getting angry, and I'd rather not get angry. Oh, no, I'd rather you get angry. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, that could get I, violent. You know, I would, nothing's getting violent because everybody's hostile. staying in their seats. <laughs> um, the reason why I'd rather you get angry is because when you shut down and when you retreat, you're really, um, you're shutting yourself off from yourself and your own process. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I don't, I don't want you to do that. I agree with that because I tend to, shut down also like because I'm fearful of what is gonna happen next so it's like I, I just don't want to proceed on so I just like okay I'll take it in and then finally when like something tiny happens it like blows up do you know what I'm saying well the but I don't know how to like let it out at the time that I want to let it out okay the one thing that we can be assured of is that nothing is going to happen in this room in this environment 
other than words. So you need to feel safe about that. Nobody's getting out of their chair. Nobody's punching anyone. No, it's not. But in terms that. of how people talk to you, it's like I want everyone to like me. Like so, I don't. Why? We, yeah, I don't why do you know. Care? See, that's the thing. I, I want care. everyone to like me. Like I could say, like, yeah, um, you know, I haven't stopped talking since since we since we've been here. I, does it bother me? No, I really could care less. Like everyone has their own agenda, so it doesn't really bother me at all. But it's annoying, um, like in the sense that you don't want to hear from anyone else. It's like that's the way. Like when you like not I not not on purpose that you do it. No. Like it's just like the it's just the feeling. But I I like you, so I just it makes me actually feel comfortable in the fact that like someone wants to talk. Like it brings also the same type of it brings a great energy. To Why everyone. do you want everybody to like you? Why is that so important? I don't know. Ever since I was little, it just I don't know. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at is the feelings that we want to have and the feelings that we don't want to have, and probably the feelings that we don't want others to have, and that we that that is related to the feelings that we ourselves don't want to have. Um, within ourselves. If you would love to help me with that, I mean, hello, I'm some, open to help. <laughs> some, some process happens in you internally if you sense that somebody is having a negative feeling toward you. Yeah. And, and it would be interesting, it, it is going to be interesting for us to explore that. Well, I think yeah. it's fascinating that I personally can't deal with quiet people because in my house... Because you don't stop talking. Well, you don't, you, you're, now you're interrupting me. And I resent that. Okay, let me finish. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, I there's a, there. Are, everybody has a reason. Now, listen, for Barbara. Something. You're entitled to resent being interrupted, but I want to tell you that one of the rules of this process is that we are going to interrupt, just as I just interrupted you. Because if we don't interrupt, <laughs> nothing's going to get done. So. Well, I'm just saying that. So I, mean, I have to, So rule number one is plead guilty. <laughs> Rule number two Get is angry. interrupt <laughs> when necessary. <laughs> rule that would okay, well, I'm going to interrupt. Two. Rule number three is interrupt I'm not when quite necessary. positive what you mean plead guilty. What if, <clears throat> like, okay, for instance, Lana said something's missing and she's, and um, Barbara? Barbara said, yes, you're correct. But what if, like, she wasn't correct? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, why should she plead guilty? I'm very open. I'm not, no, I'm, you know, I'm making like an assumption. Like, right. I'm not saying that that you aren't like correct. I'm saying yeah. I would like would like to know like if someone accused me of something or it's not well, accusing. Reagan, it uh, it depends on what you want to accomplish. If what you want to accomplish is that there's progressive communication amongst the people and the dialogue goes on and you want the person to feel understood, then you might plead guilty even when you're innocent because it's just. I, st I don't like that. No, no one likes that. I know, but it doesn't make sense. If you're innocent, why plead guilty? Well, if the person thinks you're guilty, and what you want to accomplish is that the person you're talking to has a feeling of being understood, then you could say, I, I see what you're saying. I right, can I see, see what that doesn't mean. I can see that. Agree. I can see that you see that about me or something like that. I think that probably. But if, you're, if your purpose is to be right, then oh. you should plead the way is is authentic for you but sometimes when we want to be right it uh it disturbs uh the, the relationship i think yeah. the problem right. is that people here are extremely judgmental now i have not come down on well, you, well, you, well, well, you, you know what know that these, is that is something that is something word. you have already put into your head the minute you came into this room or maybe you carried around with you throughout your life well, and that's I'm the just point. Nobody knows my life and where yeah. I've come yeah, from. Yeah, but no, I'm not right. judging and you, you and I'm not judging, you the, the, I'm not judging anyone right. in this room. Okay? But, but I'm just saying, you, you made a statement. Now, maybe my issues are from my past. Right, now, but don't generalize to everybody. Stick okay, to we're, we're, going, yeah. we're going to hear from the quiet side. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make space for Carolyn Andres. I mean, you're an actress. Get up on stage and like let it all out or whatever you need to let I'm out. Not or have now. sex I'm or actually, something. I'm not, or do something. I don't need to have sex. <laughs> well, I need to have sex. <laughs> I have sex with oh myself. My That's better than we're having sex Lana, with you're going to be stalked by the universe. <laughs> Masturbation is elation. Absolutely. We're all, I want to have sex. Okay? They're all, they're all going to be knocking down your door. It's a good thing we're all anonymous. Yeah. Wait till this hits YouTube. They're all going to want to have sex with somebody else. So, Carol and Andres, what's up with you guys? I completely 
understand and connect with you, Regan, for saying that you it's important that people like you. I don't know why that's important to me either. And lucky I'm a hairdresser because oh everybody comes God. in and loves on me every 20 minutes, you know, every <laughs> hour or whatever, you know. Um, Glad you're all that. <laughs> I don't know why it's so important. My my kids, I have five daughters, they've grown up and they look at me now and say, you know, why do you care if people like you? You know, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> you know. So that is something that I hope we can look at, you but know. Like that, that's such an accomplishment that you raised five kids yeah. that have an, a real emotional health and understand. I, I am very proud of my girls. Yeah. They're really cool people. Well, you did a great job, apparently, Thank as a mom. You. I'm fine. I feel good about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, about what I did. Yeah. Okay, Andres, what about you? Where are you at? W where am I at? I, I think this, this is moving very quickly. I think I feel that the, you know I, I appreciate the honesty that just is immediately out here. Um, I think I'm also kind of a, a slow uh, a processor. I, I tend to be uh, I'm very happy just observe, observing for a little bit and trying to just get my 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 bearings. I mean, since I've gotten here, I, I haven't stopped like looking around the room, looking at how people are dressed, just 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 uh, soaking the atmosphere in. So. Um, Okay, when you said, "Oh, let's start with the ground rules, or, or rules, or whatever," I enjoy that. That's a great start for me, because that also helps and me get no my. Way, yeah. Yeah, because I'm not quite sure of what I'm getting into here. It's very new. <laughs> 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 There's two of us. There's two of us. So yeah, so I, there's a lot of question marks. So, and for me, slow is always better than fast. Question: Why are you living in New York City? <laughs> Everything uh, here is fast that's paced. A, that's a great question. That's like, a great question. Like, go move to California or Miami. I wish I could. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a wonderful question, and I, and I think about that because I almost moved out of New York 15 years ago, and, and no, 20 years ago, and, and was just, had the land in Pennsylvania, was going to build the house, all of this, I was ready to step out into the woods kind of thing, and all of us, and some, you know, a couple of things happened, and I didn't and came back to the city and I, 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 appre I appreciate it, especially as I get older and how dynamic a place it is. So there's a part of me that, want, that likes the idea of retreating yeah. into the woods uh, mm -hmm. and then coming back to the city. I like that, that kind of play. I fantasize about that all the time, how I'm going to get up and leave New York and I'm going to go live in the Live on a farm. I want to live on That's the where beach. I'm going to go. I'm going to live on a farm. And then You're not a farm claim girl. Out the fa I, play, I play out the fantasy like for a couple days and then I drop it or I'll go on a vacation and then I'll start to get like itchy. Where's New York? Where's New York? I can't, you know, after a week or two? So I, I so do understand that. Yeah, I, I would I rather be on the beach. beach. No, that's not what I'm beach. saying. I'm the opposite. I like the. Come I on, hate New go, York. <laughs> and if I had to live out of fantasy, it would be living in England with like Prince Henry or Prince Charles. That would be fine if Charles? that was Charles, you sure? Prince of whatever. Charles. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> if I'm going to become a princess, a prince. it's all good. I, I kind of feel like you do, though. I, I kind of feel like you do because I'm older now, and I've always lived in either Long Island or New York. And I find people to be very cruel in New York as a whole, and very unfriendly, and very judgmental, and very too fast-paced. Because you get to negatives. a negative. Yes. It's There's not negative. It's my opinion. I mean, do I you have like to get up. Do you get up in the daytime and like put that out as soon as you wake up in the morning? When I well, wake up in the morning, morning can I, I kind of you? like I put out love into the universe. Well, you know what? That's what yeah, I I'm do. grieving a mother that passed away for three years ago, a horrible death of emphysema, who was kept alive for two months. Uh, you talk about the death panel. I wish my mother had died in three weeks. Sorry, mom, but and I know she would have. But I have had a very traumatic life. Okay, so a lot of things that I'm going through now is as a result of post-traumatic stress. I took care of my mother for 15 years. I could not work for 15 I years. So I, at, the, at the end of the 16 weeks that we've committed to meeting with this little experiment that we're doing, um, I think that um, each of us can come to understand something about ourselves and see something about who we are intrapsychically and how we function from this, let's call it a laboratory. Um, and I think that, w so already I know um, about two of you what the work that you need to do. Um, you, you need to really allow yourself to experience your aggression and to, to 
to be able to verbalize I did that, it. And then what did I do? I went and I took it out on myself. Drugs, alcohol, and that's where my aggression went. So I, I don't yeah. want to. No, it, it has to not go. The aggression can't be turned back that against itself. Yes. It has to be put out it. into the world. And what, what we do in therapy is put it into words. So Barbara you're you're, okay. you're yeah. clearly going to be angry at Barbara probably like ninety nine percent of the time. Because I'm identifying with my mother there, right? Well, yes. oh, and oh, and oh. it's going to be very I'm important. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> I'm not your mother. I have to deal with my own mother's <laughs> issues. No, we're, that's not true. We are all mothers to each other because we have what's called internal imagos. And so I was very codependent on my mother, and I lost my soulmate. So, so you so you're going to um, you're going to hopefully if this is a successful experiment you're going to learn to really put your um, aggression and your anger into words in a productive and constructive way yes so I'm going to help you to do that Thank now you. what what you need to do is you do fill up the space around you with words and that is something that is uh, somewhat dysfunctional for you because it leaves people feeling that there's not enough room for them that they can't breathe it's interesting your mother had emphysema I guess <laughs> so w what you're going to have to, the work you're going to have to do here, Barbara, is you're hiding from something inside you. You're hiding probably from some I'm in very, a lot of pain, okay. very deep pain. I'm in a lot of pain. And, and, I, th alone. and I think that, okay, that's, that's a rule, no touching. Oh, because we're <laughs> so doing good. everything in words. All of our impulses are put into words. So if you're having a warm, loving feeling toward Barbara. I feel bad. I don't like her feel. <laughs> I just want me to. Well, I've been really crying for three years because yeah, but I, no, I but don't have a family. She's yeah, yeah, but we know that. We, I mean, I, I, I saw that on you when you started to talk and carry on and ramble. And now you're, like, letting it out. But you need to, like, let some people in and be a little bit more trusting. Letting people in. Yeah. Are That's, you a psychic? Mm. Very good. No, Laura. I'm not a psychic. You I'm see just, that aura. Like I'm that. just a person that really cuts to the chase. Because I really, I walk around, I've lived in a lot of places, I've lived in Europe, I have had a little bit different life than most people. Um, I'm very open to people everywhere I go, and I'm really like loving and kind, and I think the whole universe has gone insane, because we've cut yeah, ourselves off from everything. And when I was talking about the sex thing, I was really being honest about that, because I've been here for four years, and I've been divorced for, for two, or no, for three years now. And I haven't had a decent date in the city. Forget about sex. The There's nothing wrong with me, is there? <laughs> what if, is there anything wrong with me? No. And next week, I'm like ready to go out on the streets wearing my lingerie and like flashing mm -hmm. my coat or something because I think it's insanity. But everybody says they want a date. So, I mean, I pick up the vibrations from her, and I, f I felt it. I felt it when she was talking. Well, I was abused by every man I've ever if known, not wanna, sexually, but every other way. If so. you want to date, you could do, there's a lot of dating sites. I've been on every dating site. I, 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 so I did that, too. I did that, too. You had no luck? No. But I'm going to meet somebody today. I mean, nobody see, took you off dinner or Yeah, lunch? but they weren't my They're they not my type. Well, you know, you've got to just keep going, yeah. I guess, right? It's a lot of work. 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 It's another job. It's another job. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a cat, but, you know, I always say to people, but you want, I, and they're very loving and unconditional pets. But you need to have some friends. I have okay? friends, but and I have a lot to, of friends. You need to, like, sit down and have a meal together and just enjoy and just chill and kind of let go of some of that. that you, you know what, but I do that, me. and I'll tell you what I feel guilty about. Why? Because I'm unemployed, and they wind up paying for everything all the time. Well, and don't I'm feel a very guilty. generous person. Do something for them. The, I always do things yeah. for them. I spend money on them that I don't have, and I've been bankrupt It's twice. not about money. <laughs> Everybody thinks it's about money. The whole economy is shit right, right now, right, okay? It's not about money. It's about just being a person and like coming back to that level. And I think that this is my take on the whole group. This is what I think of any kind of group therapy is about, to get people back into being humans again, because we're all, we, we've become insensitized with the computer and oh, the, computer, the texting and, God. you know, we can be whoever we want to be. But I think we're also a victim of our I, past. I well. often say that I really wish that I could go back to my answering machine where I put it on, could go out for friends' dinner, come back, and get my messages, return my calls. This, that everybody can get in contact with you at any time, and the ringing, and the beeping, and the buzzing, and the emails. Like you said, uh, you just start to lose yourself, and you, you get really nervous. Every time there's a beep or a ring, you, you jump in for 
something. And I'm the so opposite true. Like, my I'm, I'm like, I'm like wanting to go check my cell phone. Like, who called right. me? What's going yeah. on? Like, yeah. where's you my email? Mean, Which email? My mind always somewhere else. Like, I think due to the whole technology technology thing is because, like I'm never like when I'm in one place, I'm always in another place at the same time. Yeah, it's a really interesting idea. But we never are fun. where we yeah. are. I feel like yeah. I'm yeah. dead because my phone doesn't ring as much as it used to. My, they per, I spoke to my mother five times a day, and we lived in the same building. And I, I you have some it. issues to work on. It evidently about the way that you felt with your mother and this connection with your mother, and now that she's gone, you need to like just love her and send her back that love. Yeah, it's not that easy. Universe. You know how my mother died? She was in a body bag. Well, that's the last time I saw her. They couldn't wait to get the room, and that's the visual. The, uh, that's a post-traumatic stress thing that I see every day. That's the tape that rolls in my. Head. But you want to keep that inside of you because I lost my mother too, and she was my best friend. Yeah. Okay. But I don't. I don't keep it inside of me. I send out that love into the universe, and I'm grateful for every moment that I've ever had with her. Well, well I'm grateful. There's different but she ways. Of yeah. She was in pain. You know. Um, I just want to know from Carol whether or not I should be helping you to jump in, or should I trust that you oh, will come in when you, you want? You can trust. I'm. I. I'm uncomfortable when people. Argue and and bring up things. Arguing. Well, it, uh, and I admire you for being able to d d bring up difficult things or controversial things or you know, I do admire yeah. that. I can't do that, and I I don't have a voice for myself sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. It hurts me to hear that. Yeah. Because you seem like such a, a lovely person. I am a lovely person. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hairdresser. You should have a voice. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I have an opinion. And, you know, like I, I think I'm funny and, you know, in the moment and all, all the time, but I'm never introspective and it's like, I, I don't have the energy to, to examine all this stuff that, I, you know, it's like over my head or, or not important to me you, enough to you do it. much more external. I just go forward and... I, I, I like I totally hear what you're saying. I connect with you because you were saying it's important I, that people like I, you. I hate... Like, I've had therapy before, and I, for some reason, I just don't like it because I do not like going back and back. I just want to move forward. I want to forget it and move forward. Well, maybe going. is there something in your past that you're uh, abusive situation, maybe, that no, you want to escape? No. I don't know. I think I just want to escape my whole entire life. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, it does. It does. Well, you're young and you're pretty. And you have a nice personality. You don't want to bring that with you when you get older because it's harder to change when you're older. What do you want to run, run away from? I don't know. Like, I I want so much for myself at the same time, but I, I don't know if I... See, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm running away from something. I'm just wanting to move forward. And I just want more and more and more and more and more, and I don't want to look back. Well, see, maybe not, all the more is not making you satisfied. You have to find out what you need that's going to make you satisfied. I don't. I see. I'm like a very confused person because I don't know what I need. Well, maybe you'll know about it here. You know, but what if your life I, is in the past? What if the majority of your... Not, I've never had a happy life, I have to say, but because I've had a lot of violence and issues. Well, actually, that was Freud's definition of neurosis. One of his definitions of neurosis is that you live in the past. And um, I can't escape the past. <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> I can't escape the present because there's so much. There's but so it, much to the extent that, that anyone lives in the past, you're not living right now. But right. but it's so hard to because I don't know who I am now because right. I was my you know what I my purpose in life was it took me 50 years to figure it out. I was my mother's caregiver. I was my mother's caregiver. That was my purpose in life. And when my mother died, I had no purpose in life. I still have no purpose in life because I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. So um, we actually are at the end of this group, believe it or not. That's how fast it went. I oh want to thank you guys. Uh, it was a great first group. I'm, I'm really pleased. Thank you. You all thank did you. magnificently. Thank you. Um, I can't see y'all. <laughs>